most just like most of my videos this video is coming very late as the college football season has been over for a few weeks at this point but i thought it was still a good video worth making i'd like to simply give my thoughts about a few players i noticed during the games i watched during bowl week so a few of which definitely notably come from the sugar bowl hey youtube my name is tyler and welcome back to the athletic nerd First up, I have the Ole Miss quarterbacks. The first thing to address is, of course, the Matt Corral injury, which is very unfortunate. Good thing it isn't career-altering, even though in this day and age, practically no injury seems career-altering. Players essentially just go on a one-year hiatus at best. Not even in some cases. Cam Akers tore his Achilles right before the season started and was back in time to be a major contributor in the playoffs. Joe Burrow's entire knee was destroyed, and he came back the very next season as a top five quarterback. But even so, in Matt Corral's case, it wasn't too major of an injury anyway. I think it was just listed as an ankle sprain, which can be a nasty injury, can be nagging a little bit over a course of a few years. Apparently, it isn't too severe, but like I said, it can become a reoccurring thing to keep an eye on. The main problem is with the fact that it delays his pre-draft prep a bit, preventing him from doing maybe some pre-draft workouts and just training, which could affect his draft stock just a little bit. I think he'll de he'll, he should definitely be fine by camp and during the offseason stuff, though, so it's not too big of a deal. But it does raise the question whether or not you should play in bowl games, especially since they're inconsequential. And I think the, abs I think the answer is absolutely not. I probably would just because it's the last game of your college career. It's another week to build memories, but as a prospect, there's essentially no benefit. One game isn't going to reverse a season's worth of film. You're only delaying the beginning of your pre-draft prep by a week or two, which can be a difference. Even more so if you have another, if you have another game you have to recover from, and of course, with the risk of injury, like in Corral's case. Now, the one silver lining I did find with Matt Corral's injury was with the fact that it allowed the backup true freshman, Luke Altmaier, to get some playing time. And after his performance, I think the Rebels are in great hands. On paper, his stats weren't great. He only threw 15 for 28 with one, with one passing touchdown, two interceptions. One of those interceptions were in the clutch, and he was sacked seven times. But he flashed great potential, which is essentially all you want out of a true freshman. He was a four-star recruit out of Starkville, Mississippi, so he's, he is an in-state guy, according to 24-7 Sports. His good size at about 6'2", 200 pounds, but what jumped, out, what jumped out to me was mainly his arm. He does throw a beautiful ball. Tight spiral, he could be on a rope if he needed to be. Sure, he missed a few throws, but he is a true freshman, and he did have a few great throws to go along with it. I was also impressed with his legs. He could scramble and move around in the pocket a bit. He did clock a 4740 according to his profile, and he clearly has above average athleticism. While Corral is essentially a first-round pick, I think once Altmaier gets his legs underneath him, and if he develops the way I think he can, he could be the type of guy to challenge Caleb Williams as a top selection in the 2024 draft, which is obviously a long ways away, and it is a bit of a projection if he puts it all together, which he has a good chance of doing under Lane Kiffin in their back-to-back -to -back top 25 recruiting classes. Now, moving on to running backs. We did have a lot of good stories come from Bowl Week that I actually noticed. Now, the one I want to start, like I said, I am talking about the Sugar Bowl with a lot of these guys, which was the original inspiration for this video, is Abram Smith. He's absolutely dominant during the game. He's a fifth-year senior from Abilene, Texas, so he's a little bit older, but he's very stout at about 5'11 and between 220 and 230 pounds. And the most shocking fact is that he actually just switched from linebacker, which you wouldn't have noticed. He alternated between both over the course of his college career, and after not seeing the field as a tailback originally, they moved him to linebacker, but then they moved him back this season. He rips off for 1,600 yards and 12 touchdowns. And that's his first year back. So it's just like, I don't really know why he wasn't getting playing time before. But he is probably a day three guy, and I'll expect him to test particularly well. But no matter what he does at the next level, he deserves some attention for the season he had. It is an interesting prospect to look at in the upcoming months, and he will be at the Senior Bowl. Next up, I have Jerry and Ely, the Ole Miss running back. And I've been waiting for this one ever since I first saw him play. Jerry and Ely is an absolute playmaker. 
He's a plus as a wide receiver from what I've seen, which is fairly uncommon amongst most college backs. But it's not even as a receiver that notice that I, that I began to notice, but it's his ridiculous speed. He's a little small at around 5'9", between 190 and 200 pounds, which may limit him as a three-down back. But if you give him a crease, he is gone. It's simply, it's just he's gone. If he ends up in the right scheme with the right offensive line, I think he'll surprise some people in the NFL. I'd give him a, se- a second-round grade, but he'll probably fall into at least the third round, which I think will be a great value for any team that is looking for a little bit of juice. He could test in the four threes, but probably a low four four, just because that's what you expect from college players. Another aspect that about him that is very interesting is that he actually could have gone to the MLB. He was a really highly touted baseball prospect, which makes sense given his athletic profile, but. It's also baseball. Most guys can't do it, especially as a running back. It's something you typically see from quarterbacks. So if it weren't for injury and simply the fact that he chose football, who knows what he could have become on the diamond. Now next up, I have Brian Robinson Jr. out of Alabama. He had a great season, and while he's another guy that it's not that's not expected to go too high in the draft, especially compared to the line of crimson uh, tie backs that came before him, but he's certainly a riser. There's a joke that goes around uh, that essentially says to always draft Alabama players, especially at running back, no matter their production in college, and he shows why. He played a limited role for years after waiting out five star after five star and first round pick after first round pick, but he played a part to the t- he played a crucial part to the team last season as the backup to Najee Harris, and definitely this year as a fifth year senior. Especially in this day and age, with the amount of transfers that happen, kudos to him for putting in the hard work and allowing it to finally pay off in this season of extra eligibility. Now next, we have Zamir White out of Georgia. While Georgia has a few good backs this season, it is the story of Zamir White that really sticks out. He was born with a defect and doctors told his mom to abort him, and then he was supposed to die soon after he was born. He not only survived all of that, but then thrived on the field, only to suffer not one, but two ACL tears. Tears. Any other guy in that situation, he had every single excuse to never play football, and even at the beginning of his life, and then definitely not to become of a superstar in college. He's not expected to be drafted high either, but he del- but he deserves a lot of respect, not just as a player, but as a person with everything he persevered through. Next, moving on to wide receiver, I'm just going to start with a lot of the Alabama guys. Now, first is Jameson Williams. Of course, I have to start with this injury. As I said with Matt Corral, injuries don't really seem to be too big of a factor anymore over the course of a player's career. But of course, they matter to some extent. He was the consensus number one wide receiver by that point after transferring from Ohio State to get away from that loaded room, only to get injured. And like I said, it was another knee injury, so it does matter, which will certainly drop him down some team's board unless the team is really willing to take that chance on the talent he brings even though he'll probably miss camp and maybe even some of the start of the season, depending on how well he rehabs. Now next is John Mechie, who also suffered an injury. And while he technically didn't get injured on bowl week, I just wanted to bring it up and touch on his injury, which sucks because maybe he was maybe going to be a second-round pick, but it may drop even more to a third or fourth. Now one thing to note is just that it's not always about injuries in the medical checks, but also you're just not doing pre-draft workouts and stuff. So, and it, and it is a big difference between seeing a player on film and how they move in person for a lot of these scouts. So it just brings up more questions. Now, a third guy from the Alabama wide receiver room I want to talk about is Ajayi Hall. And he's a prospect to watch for the future like Luke Altmaier. He had a real nice play in the national championship game. And at 6'3", 195, he's gay, he has great speed to go, I mean, he has great size to go along with game-breaking speed. I think he'll certainly be a higher first round pick once he becomes eligible within the next few years. And then next up, I have George Pickens from Georgia. I think he can definitely be another riser. He had torn his ACL before the season, but with the way he played in the championship game, it showed he's he's still the playmaker he was when he came into college as an uber talented freshman. If his medicals check out, and if he tests well, he could maybe become a second round pick if a team really falls in love with him. Now, the next and last wide receiver I have to talk about is Jackson Smith and the Jigba. Everyone has probably heard the name by now, and many still can't pronounce it. But after the record-breaking game he had in the Rose Bowl, he's definitely on everybody's radar. His big play threat, even with Garrett Wilson and Olave in the loaded wide receiver room, 
and he was arguably the best out of the bunch this entire time and is the top wide right receiver prospect when forecasting to next year's draft. Now on to the defense. I don't really have anybody here because it's just uh, these are players I actually like noticed during these games and out of the games I watched. So I have Sauce Gardner, of course. He's a real deal. Even though Cincinnati lost, he proved that his resume as a lockdown corner is legit well, while keeping a stat of not allowing a touchdown over his entire career. He could challenge as a normal corner if he does great, and if seeing these inconsistencies and injuries become a problem for some scouts, because like I said, it really only takes one team to fall in love. Especially because in the draft, it's just whatever team picks you. So, and then I have the entire Georgia defense. This is not a player, but this was clearly a historic group. A lot of these guys will, be, will go to the NFL over the next two years, and I don't even know all their names. Nicobe Dean has a chance to become a superstar, potential top 10 pick. I think Jordan Davis is overrated, but is worth a first round pick just because of all his ability. The other defensive tackle they have, I forgot his name, which is disrespectful, I guess, a little bit. But he'll probably go as a second round pick. And then Trevon Walker, he's he's expected to be another fellow first round pick. He's a clear disruptor, another playmaker. And just that entire defense was very talented and great job, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. And that's a close case. Hope you enjoyed the video, especially since it wasn't supposed to be even this long. It's supposed to be like really short. Make sure to smash the like button. And if you do, and to subscribe if you haven't for more sports content in the near future, especially as as we get into the offseason and NBA playoffs. Use my links to cop some fresh sports gear in the near in, in, in the description. You won't be disappointed. I hope you have a great day and peace. They know I search for perfection, I know I'm far from perfect But ain't nothing that can stop me, I'm on my ground for certain Tell me if you're working harder, if you're hardly working